And I also want to say special uh, happy Mother's Day to all the mothers out there who are nurses, who are uh, um, teachers, because we know what it's like to teach at home. And also something near and dear to my heart is imaging people, x-ray techs, Ulster Town techs. And they deserve a big round of applause and a shout out, especially on Mother's Day, uh, that they're doing an amazing job and really being very brave, putting their lives at risk and their families' lives at risk by taking care of sick patients. Don't forget to smash that share button, subscribe to my page, follow me on Instagram at Lance Bachman, and keep sending me those questions. Happy Mother's Day, everybody. Lance Bachman here with Dr. Luciano and Dr. Shiloh on the den. Thank you guys for being on, giving an update for what's happening here in the Philadelphia area. Quick, real fast, Dr. Luciano, are the cases increasing or decreasing in Philly, Bucks, Montgomery County area? Yeah, so I think uh, what we're seeing in Bucks County is a, uh, you know, a trend downwards as far as uh, the overall picture. Uh, majority of our cases have been nursing home related or long-term care facilities. So when you factor that in, the numbers that we're trying to target, I think are about 23 cases per day or less. That's the arbitrary number they came up with. Uh, so when you do that, that math and you factor those cases out, um, it's around seven, I think, uh, that we've been seeing this last week per day. So, About unfortunately, seven, I don't think seven. That's seven patients that are community uh, acquired. So, um, it doesn't look like it's at that level, but when you factor in the long care, uh, long term care, it's going to be a little bit higher, obviously. So, that's the question do we factor those in or not? It seems to be uh, the big question as far as opening. So, you both saw the letter that I talked about, and I asked you the senator wrote saying, a few days ago, 70% of these deaths are in nursing homes, average age is 79 years of age. And since then, that number has increased in nursing homes. I think you said it was 80 or 90%. Dr. Shiloh, what do you make of that letter from the senator? And do you agree with that letter or not? I'm gonna say I haven't seen the letter specifically, uh, but you, know, you can look at data in a lot of different ways and you really have to look at it globally. We got guidance by the United States government, the CDC about what, states and specifically other counties are supposed to do as far as a 14-day decline. We have yet to see that. You do have to ask yourself the question, if in fact, and it's true that a lot of deaths occur in older patients and they may be coming from nursing homes, it's getting in there somehow. And the way it's getting in there is through the people who come in day to day from, and not intentionally, of course, but from all the various people who work there, from nursing, nursing aides, people who make the food, clean the place. So there is a spread that's going on and that has to be contained. And frankly, listen, you know, if you have a grandmother who lives in a nursing home, you probably love your grandmother who lives there and she's not expendable. The, it seems like the high-risk people are in nursing homes. Is that correct? That's where the majority of deaths are coming from across the country. Is that correct? Well, obviously, they take the uh, age into consideration, then that's high risk as well as a lot of comorbidities. But I absolutely uh, agree that uh, nursing home lives do matter. But when we look at the overall picture, it's about where's the focus of the infection. So when we start doing contact tracing and kind of figure out where the virus is located, is it rampant in the community or is it isolated in the facility? We know Governor Wolf just extended us to June 2nd, at least, which I think... So the first goal post was, and correct me if I'm wrong, we're going to lock everyone down and social distance until the hospitals won't be overran. I saw a thing yesterday about every hospital in the United States has at least 65% of their ventilators in the ICU open and available. Here in Bucks County, it's a little bit over 75%. Philadelphia, same exact thing. My question is this, is then they moved it to we got to flatten the curve, which I think most states have flattened the curve. Is that correct? Most big cities have flattened the curve. And now it's, hey, we're dropping it to into a certain number. Does it seem like the goalpost keeps getting moved and moved, or is it just me? Well, you I don't know? think it's being moved. I think that you had an initial goal, as you correctly stated, of keeping the hospitals from being overrun with people. And there are some hospitals, you know, that especially in New York, uh, that have been overrun. Plenty of colleagues who work there. I have several colleagues who got sick. Are they that still was being overrun today? You know, I don't think that they're as overrun as they were. I think things have changed. Obviously, there's the, the curve flattened and, and it's on its trending down. So there's fewer people coming in. I think the ability to, to handle people uh, differently uh, and, and as such, not everybody with a pulse ox of 65% ends up on a ventilator. So there's a lot of change. Uh, but that doesn't mean that we are in a position where we're just like, okay, we're in the free and clear. The goal was met to slow it down and now the goal is to watch it decrease so that when it does decrease, then we're in a better place to reopen everything. I watched New York's numbers this week. 
66% of these cases new came from people that were sheltering in place or nursing homes, sheltering in place, 2% from the homeless, 1% from prison. I mean, me, when I think of homeless, I think you're out in the street, you're walking around, touching people. Only 2% came from homeless, 1% from the prison population. I mean, the same thing seems to be in Bucks County from what you're saying, Dr. Luciano. Wouldn't it make sense to say, hey, listen, everybody could open up slowly, but if you're going to be around elderly people or people that have these uh, things that you ha or make you higher risk, stay social distancing away because – I know I'm not allowed to see my mother in her nursing home, but yet it's still spreading in there. And I don't, I don't understand why, Dr. Luciano. Can you help me? Am I wrong with what I'm thinking? No, so, I mean, I, uh, I, I, I sense the, uh, you know, there's a lot of questioning out in the environment. So, first off, I don't have any agenda here. You know, I'm completely neutral. I'm a primary care doctor, a father of two, and small business owner in the community, all right? So, those are my interests there. And you asked me to come on the show just to give my opinion, help to kind of explain some things. That's why I'm here basically. So when you ask me, you know, should we start opening up? I mean, I'm not an expert in that, but my feeling is after looking at everything over the last uh, couple months, you know, absolutely the uh, measures we took were necessary. We have no idea what this novel virus, contagious, aggressive, deadly. We all know this. This is all true. So then we need to start analyzing the data that we start to have coming in so we can get a better picture. Dr. Sanister just came out in Bucks County and said it's time to reopen. I mean, that's our head health official. Was I wrong when I read that? Is that our head health official here in Bucks but, County? I, and I think cautiously. I don't think there's a, you know, there's extremes to both sides, but it has to be somewhere in the middle there, you know? So I agree with Dr. Charlotte. Science is, it needs to be taken seriously, but, you know, to, to what degree um, do we need to be uh, so strict? I think, you know, it's, everything's playing out in real time, so we need to kind of take that into consideration. Dr. Shala, do you think we should be opening back up slowly here in Bucks County? Well, I mean, of course, I think that it's, it's going to come a time when things are going to have to reopen. I think things are going to be changed no matter what. I mean, I've discussed this before. Uh, you could turn the switch on today and say, hey, everything's back open again. And people are still going to feel uneasy about going to sit at their local restaurant in and out, you know, whether it's outdoors or indoors. I mean, everyone's going to be wearing masks. You can only sit with two people, uh, the tables are going to be spread apart, 25% of people. I mean, it, it, you know, that's just a restaurant environment. People uh, view it as an invisible threat, especially until it involves them or their family. And then they start to recognize how serious this can really be. But why don't we see a big surge here in Bucks County and Philadelphia when the data is shown? People just like Mike said, Dr. Luciani said, I was in Heller Seafood yesterday. This is not a shot at them. There was 20 people in the store. 20 people wearing masks. The store was, and I, and I was surprised, but I wasn't scared. But people just aren't social distancing the way people think. I mean, but they're wearing masks, Lance. I mean, they so are. they are. Everybody was wearing a mask. I'll say that. Yes, I, I agree with you. I go to work every day. There's not, it's not like a, it's a ghost town and I'm the only one on the road. However, there's definitely a lot fewer people. And I need to just my anecdotal evidence. It takes me 15 minutes less to get to work. Yes, there's still people moving around. There are still essential people out there. And maybe there are people who are disobeying the rules and are getting out. But it's still way less than it was. And when they are out, they're using masks. They're using gloves and, and masks and gloves, et cetera. So, yes, that's part of the reason. It's not as if it's a free-for-all. Everybody's back to normal. We're wearing masks and we're having uh, parties uh, on people's backyards. I don't believe that's happening yet. And we both have said, we all know this is political. We've said that what, what that, what it means, we really don't know, but we know there's some political element to it. Dr. Shiloh, with that being said, why do you think no one stepped up and said, hey, let's just take the politicalness out of this, sit down and do the right thing? You no, know, define do the right thing. I mean, what I believe is the right thing may not jive with what you believe is the right thing. And, and as we've seen online, you know, uh, everyone with a computer or a phone is a doctor now, okay? Everyone has the ability to look to Google or look to a YouTube video and using something called confirmation bias, find what they want to hear. I think people like Dr. Fauci and others are attempting the best possible way to make this a scientific endeavor of, of safety and health and well-being. And yet you have people who question the integrity of someone like that. That's the politicalness of it. Facebook, Google, now, this isn't one video about pandemic. This isn't two doctors out in California now. This is over 30 some different doctors here that are medically licensed doctors in the state of the United States saying they disagree with this. They don't believe it's right. They think we're caring about it the wrong way. 
And it's time to open up. And not all have said open up, but they believe it's we got to start moving. Kind of to like you're saying, Dr. Luciano, we got to start moving forward somehow with this. But yet all of them have been taken down by Facebook and Google and every other type of place that is privately held, maybe trading on the stock market, but where their leader can dictate what content goes on. Do you agree with that, Dr. Luciano? I don't agree with censorship, especially, uh, you know, in this country. Um, that's just going to uh, bring more confusion and questioning. People are going to wonder why that happened and believe it even more. So it's important to counteract those points if they're false. Um, but, you know, I don't think censorship is going to be productive. Um, I think it's also important to know that, you know, a lot of us don't know the right answer. You know, this is all playing out. This is a global pandemic. You know, I mean, so we don't know how it progresses. We don't know the death uh, rate we predict, um, but it's too early to know. So it's important to stay cautious in the beginning. That's what we've been doing. If you take the fact that there are millions of physicians in this United States and you're going to cherry pick 20, 30 people who say what they want, I'll tell you something, Lance. You know what's going to cure the coronavirus? Take a dead cat and wave it around your head 30 times. You're going to say, shoot, that's ludicrous. Okay, you know what? But it's true because I'm a doctor and I said so. That's what these people say. They make up whatever they want and say, hang behind there as a doctor. I'm a doctor and say what they want. That's not how things should work. And censorship isn't censorship, it's that these people are giving de defined misinformation that will confuse lay people who don't have the uh, knowledge to understand that it's false. But are we getting closer to a vaccine? I heard rumors that there's a company in China that's already mastered, built over two, three million vaccines. They're, they're, they're mass making them. Is that true? We're close to Johnson & Johnson, another company? Yes, there are lots of companies racing to make a vaccine and they will eventually be available. It's just a matter of testing it and ensure that it's safe for the general population, that we're not actually doing something that's harmful for people. That's the intent of these companies. Are they gonna make a profit? Most likely, yes, but that's the way that our society lives. But, but, but do we have a vaccine? When will we have a vaccine? Because I'm hearing they found one, they're mass producing it, they're just waiting for the FDA to approve it. Is there any indication or is that all false? I'm not sure when the date is. I think I've heard as early as the beginning of next year. Um, but the Dr. Shah is right. It's all about safety. Once you start vaccinating hundreds of millions of people, you know, if there's any side effects or long-term problems, uh, that really needs to be uh, understood before giving that. How long do most vaccine clinical trials take, Dr. Shiloh, ballpark normally? Two months? Most vaccine clinical trials take 12 months to a year and a half. That's why it takes so long for it to come out. You know, look at it this way. If, if the United States came out with a vaccine tomorrow, uh, it would make it so that 350 million Americans would get the vaccine before it would make a billion of them to give out to the rest of the world. It's, that's why there's a global race to make these vaccines. They're not going to be ready for at least another six to 12 months. It, it seems like everyone's got a united effort as far as uh, coming, coming to, uh, to a, a, a treatment here, but I'm not sure what the, what the restrictions are sharing. Ethically, it would be the right thing to do to share the, um, the actual uh, nature of the vaccine so that others can mass produce it, but I don't know that it Look at remdesivir. Remdesivir has been shown to reduce the duration of the disease from 15 days to 11 days, and yet it's still, the Gilead cannot make enough of it. Well, what if Gilead shared its production with other pharmaceutical companies that could ramp, ramp, ramp it up? That hasn't happened yet. So that's why there's still a very small percentage of people who are hospitalized who are actually getting remdesivir, despite that it's proven- Wait, hold on, wait a minute. So there's a drug out there that they can't mass produce enough of it, and they can't just say to- Let's just say Johnson and Johnson. Hey, I'm going to pay you to mass produce this so we can save people's lives and we'll split the profit. Uh, you know how patents work, right? And Gilead is made a, a you know company that a lot of people their stock went through the roof because their clinical trials showed that the drug reduced the duration of illness by four days. They don't have enough of it, and they're uh, I, I mean, listen, I'm not the in these pharmaceutical companies, but they're not allowing other companies to make it no thank you both for being on the den i appreciate it all the other mothers out there happy mother's day thank you both i know it was a little tougher questions today but you answered them both and i agree with both of you on a lot of these things i disagree with the censorship one but i actually agree with you guys on pretty much everything else i mean you guys are both great doctors in bucks county philadelphia area. lucky to have you both i appreciate you guys and everything you both do seriously because it does seed up a lot of your time I know you get a lot of comments on here and people don't know the integrity of you two as doctors. And that's why I always jump in when I see someone try and take a shot at one of these two, because if you knew the character of these two men, you wouldn't be questioning them like we're questioning everyone else because these two are not the problem, they're part of the solution. 
Evening, buddy. Have a good day and happy Mother's Day. Thank you for being on the den.